guys welcome back to the channel i hope you're having a good one today i'm gonna dive in to the band alien ant firm and rank all their five studio albums now this band is an american rock band for lack of a better term they also have alternative rock uh new metal a lot of different things mixed in throughout their uh, their catalog they're known as a one-hit wonder which is ridiculous because uh well, personally, I am a big fan of this group, especially their early work. And it's just kind of sad that they're known for their one-hit wonder, Smooth Criminal, the cover by uh, from Michael Jackson originally. The band was formed in Riverside, California back in 1996. Like I previously said, they got five studio albums, and their current members currently are Dryden Mitchell, who is the vocalist he really separates this band from all the other like alternative type bands he just puts so much emotion into his voice and on every track and he just has this distinct voice we also got tim pugue mike cosgrove uh and past members include joe hill and the one and only ty zamora he was the glue that held the band together he was he had to leave the band around uh, 2005, 2006-ish, I believe. But he came back for a bit later, and then he, he's gone again. But it's too bad, because his bass lines were just out of this world. He was the most uh, uh, musically inclined out of the group, I would say. You can really hear his influences from different groups like uh, Mr. Bungle to Primus and all these, you know, the crazy bass line type bands. He brought that to Alien Ant Firm. So without further ado, let's get into this ranking. So coming into fifth place, last place, is unfortunately Up in the Attic from 2006. Now this was the last album the band released before going on a little hiatus. Uh, it received pretty negative reviews, mixed to negative reviews, and fans were not too pleased with the record. And it had a, a hard time being produced due to record labels, and it had a really hard time anyway getting out there. And once it did in 2006, the fans were were kind of split on it. This album still contains some of the edgy tracks that the previous records had, but it definitely didn't have that balance. Like before, we get a lot more acoustic tracks, just a little bit more on the lighter rock side than usual. As for the track listing, I feel like it wasn't the best order to put the songs. It feels like you get... A pretty banging intro with the first few tracks and then it loses steam a bit and it doesn't really fully come back to to the first of the just the hype of the first of the record this is also the first record to contain uh, some filler material like some tracks where you just you would be better off taking them right off the record and for me the most filler song in this album is crickets it it's probably my least favorite out of their whole discography, or it's close to it, one of my least favorite tracks. And while I feel that they uh, experimented with uh, lighter rock and acoustic songs in previous records, like in Truant, this one I feel like they just weren't as good songs. The songwriting just wasn't there. But on that note, Supreme Lifestyle is an amazing track. It's a 10 out of 10 track, and it is an acoustic song which is uh, surprising for me, I'm more of the metal guy, but that song was really well written and the lyrics to the, to the bass line, everything sounds great. As for the rest of the tracks, I think what I feel is mine is the closest thing you can get to a 10 out of 10 track. I'd say it's like a nine out of 10. And then after that, we get a bunch of more mediocre uh, tracks or they're just filler. This is not a bad record by any means, it just feels uneven in its track listing. And it's definitely the first record to have uh, this amount of filler on it, unfortunately. For the track listing rating I gave on here, for all the tracks put together with a score on each, it averaged out to a 71 out of 100, so a 7 out of 10 say is, is fairly good, and I, that is my personal score as well. Because uh, even though I add up all the track listings, I still have a personal score like how the album made you feel in that. It's around a 7 out of 10. Like I said, it's a good record. It's just Alien Ant Firm's weakest, unfortunately. Of course, this is all opinion. So next, coming in the fourth place, we got Always and Forever from 2015. Now, I really wasn't sure which was going to come in last, Up in the Attic or this. They're both 
the weaker albums from this band's discography. But the reason why this one edged it out just a bit more, I feel like there's less filler. The Even the worst tracks are better than, than the worst tracks on Up in the Attic. So that's the reason for this placing. Unfortunately, this album has a lot more of a radio-friendly sound. Uh, I hate to say it, like pop sound to their music. There's, they lost all their edge. This album was uh, crown-funded, though. Like they, uh, It was no record label or anything to distribute it. It was all with the fans' money they made this record, which was nice that they could put out another record. Uh, it's unfortunate that Ty Zamora was not featured on here, even though he did write a few of the songs and you can really tell with the bass lines in them that they're his style it's just like i said it's it's just a lot of radial friendly tracks on here and at times it can even come off as a bit cheesy especially for them uh it's i just prefer them to have more angst like in their earlier days as for the track listing again they always come out strong with their a little bit more heavier tracks heavier tracks for these guys with uh yellow pages simpatico uh and burning and then we get let them know which is the the big track off this album i was skeptical on saying it's a 10 out of 10 but i am going to give it the 10 out of 10 off this album i do believe it's the only one it has a, a really cool bass line not much guitar but it's it's bass heavy in the verse singers almost rapping at times and yeah it it's just funny let them know that they're going straight to the top being as in like they're going number one or whatever I don't know what they mean by that but it's just ironic that these guys never got the attention they deserved but yeah that chorus and let them know is catchy as hell and it'll get stuck in your head whether you like it or not as for the rest of the tracks it's pretty much all radio friendly after let them know well, even let them know is to a certain extent I feel like you have to make it towards the later end of their record like track 11 12 and 13 feel more like their older style so if you're into more of their old earlier stuff you might like god like better weather and dirty bomb and of all the tracks together the rating i got was a 78 out of 100 so around 78 percent on this one but a personal score i think fits more with 7 out of 10 like i said this is close with up in the attic but I just wish it had a little more of an edge to it. That's what brought down my personal score a bit. But 7 out of 10 is still, it's still a decent record. These guys don't have a bad record necessarily. Coming in at number 3 is Greatest Hits. Their debut album. Who names their debut Greatest Hits? <laughs> it could be a, a really a smart marketing strategy though if that would have worked. But I don't think it did. Because I've been listening to Alien Air Firm since their first release anthology which i thought was their first release but apparently they have this album in 99 and uh i don't know much about it the internet does not know much about it except for the fact that it won best independent record in 99 at the la music awards so that's good i guess and saying that yeah it is an independent album and you can really tell that they're the ones who put this album out there it doesn't have that polish of the record labels and like I said, as I didn't know this album, I was quite surprised by it, making it third on my list. It's essentially half demos of songs we already know from later records that they either redone or they just polished up. And then the other half, which be the other five tracks, are all tracks we just never heard of before. And interesting enough, they're all fairly good. I'll start off by talking about the demos. Uh, we get... These days, which has changed quite a bit, it's just the chorus that's the same, and it's only at the first and the very end. The rest of the song is all different, so it's almost like we get another new track there. But for the rest of the demos, like Movies, SS Recognize, Universe, and Slick Thief, which is really Smooth Criminal, just uh, worded differently, are all essentially the same track, just the demo versions. But the five tracks that are new are Pink Tea, which is... A pretty cool opening riff to that it has it has this edge to it this whole album is definitely their heaviest and it gives off like new metal vibes very 90s metal and uh, it's just really cool to hear because I never even knew that they had this sound next up we got doll or doll roll which is my personal favorite it is the 10 out of 10 track on this record it's just such a unique bass line and guitar mixed it uh, has like Mr. Bungle written all over it and like I said like Primus other 
crazy bass bands, but with really unique guitars in there as well. We got the track Nova Hands, which is more like a Deftone style song, which again is heavy as hell. I'm like, wow, not expecting the heaviness from this record. And uh, yeah, it's almost like a sludge Deftones style, reminiscent of uh, their earlier work, like Adrenaline. The only track that is just kind of okay is Denigrate, which is uh, another track that we never unreleased track except for on this record. And even though it's the weakest on the whole album besides the demos, it's still like a 7 out of 10. So yeah, pretty great record if you ask me for being a no-name record. And you should for sure check it out. Uh, as for the track listing, I would give it, well, I gave it a 75 out of 100, so 75%, not too bad, 7.5 out of 10, but my personal score would be an 8 out of 10, just because I, I'm a little hard on some of these demos because they're not cleaned up like I'm used to, but this was technically the first version of them, and if I would have known the more polished version, maybe I would appreciate these more. And plus the five tracks that I didn't know before are actually pretty damn amazing, every one of them. And it's heavy, the good type of heavy that I like. Now we're leading in the top two, and to be honest, I wasn't sure which one of these we're going to place first before I've done this, this uh, ranking video. I really had to go over each album, but coming in the second place, we got Truant, the 2003 record. Now, this is a pretty great follow-up to Anthology, the first record, which you guys are probably already guessed where it is on my ranking. It got great instrumentals, uh, catchy courses, a much more uh, professional sound and more uh, mature sound for the band. This is where they started incorporating more acoustics in that and a little, a little bit of radio-friendly songs, but it's... It's not overused or oversaturated in this album. It's used at the right times and they still got the edge when they need to. As for the track listings, I got two songs that get my 10 out of 10 rating on this one, which will be SS Recognize and These Days. A lot of you may know These Days. It was one of their fairly bigger hits. And in the track listing, it flows fairly nice until maybe the three quarter mark. You get a little speed bump with a Tia Loop or Tia Lupe. Just not my style. It has these weird like maracas and it's almost like a salsa song. Just it was just them experimenting, I think. But uh, just this not wasn't my style. I give it like a five out of ten. But the rest of the record is all a pass for the rest of twelve songs. And uh, we get cl songs that are very close to being ten out of ten. The nine out of tens like a thousand days drifting apart, uh, rubber mallet. And the, and the rest of them are all pretty much 8 out of 10. So really great record. Some uh, funky line uh, bass lines in here. Some cool guitar riffs. And it's definitely something worth checking out. For a track listing rating, I give it an 82 of 100. So 8.2 out of 10. Pretty good. And as for a personal record, I would give this an 8.5 out of 10. It is a, a fairly good record that I go back to quite often. Coming in the number one place is the one and only Anthology from 2001, their debut album, or so I thought. Apparently it was their second album. This album is just the perfect blend of like uh, being heavy, being melodic, but also not straying too far away from your alternative sound. It, uh, it contains Smooth Criminal, the standout track of all time from this band, the, the one song that makes them a one hit wonder. And it also holds a lot of uh, that 90s grunge sound. It, it kind of brought that over from the 90s since this is early 2000s. Now the track listing on this album is just phenomenal to me. I got four standout tracks, 10 out of 10 tracks, which is Whisper, my one of my personal favorites. We got Wish, we got Smooth Criminal. I think that that cover was very well done. They really elevated that song to me. It's way better than the MJ version and universe being another song that was on their uh, greatest hits record but it was just done way better in this version yeah all four of those songs are criminally underrated besides maybe smooth criminal but uh great great tracks and a lot of nine out of ten tracks on here as well such as courage uh movies summer uh, what other what other ones we got here? Sticks and Stones. It's all great songs, and all the rest are eight out of tens. There's only one song 
for two songs i have as sevens which is calico and happy death day yeah and and they're still great songs are seven out of tens which are good so this is a phenomenal record for me i've been a big fan of it since its debut i love that they were still using the the puns are like anthology with the ant in it just like true ant and I, that might be their problem when they get rid of those ants and their album titles their albums seem to drop in quality maybe the next time you do an album you put ant back in the title so as for track listing this gets an 85 out of 100 an 8.5 and as for a personal ranking this is a 9 out of 10 it's a great record you should definitely check it out uh, don't put them aside as a one hit wonder go through this album and see it for yourself they got songs like flesh and bone which is not my favorite but i like how they have it separates itself from the rest of the album it's more of a police sound it's just a really easy album to get through it's an easy listen uh no bad tracks whatsoever and it's just too bad that this album came out in a time where most of the bands are all hated nowadays so there you have it guys that's my ranking for the five alien ant farm albums let me know your ranking down below and is it any different than mine is it the same as mine do you agree on any of the any of the things i said in this video or do you highly disagree uh and make a good debate down in the comment section below i will be sure to do my next ranking of alien ant farm will be their album artwork which is nothing too special but i still want to get it out there and uh, i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching